Kiitos. Nyt me tultiin tänne näyttelijän studioon. Mikä, mikä paikka tämä nyt on? Harry Schreiber Studios. Eli tämä on mun näyttelijäkoulu New Yorkissa. Täällä on koulu aika hyvä maine. Kuulemma siis viidenneksi parhaan ainakin, tai viiden parhaan joukossa ainakin näistä kaikista. <tos> tota, Miksi sä valitsit just tämän paikan? Uh, mun mielestä on aika monipuolinen uh, koulu, ja täällä ei opiskella ainoastaan yksi ja ainoa tekniikka, mitä moni niin kaupunkin koulusta uh, opettaa, niin tämä maisena tekniikka tai metodi, vai täällä on niin opiskella vähän niin kuin kaikkea, ja jokainen sit, niin kuin näyttelijä pystyy niin kuin auttaa ja käyttää sitä, mitä hänelle niin kuin sopii. Okei, siis mä en ymmärtänyt näistä tekniikoista yhtään mitään. <laughs> joo, siis eli mitä se tekniikka nyt sit on? Se, se ei ole kauhean tota, niin kuin mielenkiintoinen niin kuin asia, et, 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 jos ei ole tällä alalla, mutta on tavallaan niin kuin erilaisia niin kuin tekniikoita. Ja tämä kaikki lähti niin kuin Venäjältä Stanislavskilta. Kostan sen Stanislavski, joka oli ensimmäinen ihminen, joka yritti niin kuin, uh, laittaa kaikki nämä niin näyttelijäopinnot niin yhteen paikkaan ja löytää metodi, millä sä pystyt niin <laughs> käyttämään <selittää, laughs> niin <kuin laughs> käyttää, niin kuin, tunteita ja niin kuin, myös kontrolloida ne. Eli semmoinen metodi koulukirjan näyttämiseen. Okei. Okay, Olisiko okay. niin helpompi näin? Me ehkä vähän. Okei, okay. no kyllä me vähän ymmärrämme. No, tota, no niin, me ollaan menossa siis seuraavaksi tapaan siis tätä Teriä. Teri Snyder ja Poikeen Schreiber. Hyvä, kun me ei tunneta näitä. Hyvin, hyvin tärkeä ihminen joka me, tapauksessa. Me emme näe nähdä niin. Aina, aina. Niin, tota, no, niin, siis kerro meille Teristä, että siis, niin, millainen, mi, mi, miten, millainen studio tämä on hänelle ja millainen ihminen hän on? Joo, no te kohta saatte itse, itse nähdä, mutta Teri on tämän paikan niin perustaja ja, ja hän on muuten tosi kiva, kiva ihminen ja on, myös on opettaa, opettaa tässä koulussa. Mä en hänen kanssaan niin opiskelee vielä, mutta jossain vaiheessa. Joo. Et mun oli, niin kuin, mä halusin tavalla, niin kuin, aloittaa tämän yhden vuoden koulu tai niin kuin, yhden vuoden opisto, mutta koska mun niin kuin, aikataulu ei sitä saa, niin että mä en voi käydä täällä joka päivä mun muitakin juttuja ja <laughs> töitä, niin uh, mä otan kaikki nämä niin kuin, kurssit erikseen. Okay. Eli mä aloitin, koska mä just aloitin täällä, mä aloitin tällaisella niin kuin, aloittelijaintensiivisellä koulusta <laughs> niin kaksi kertaa viikossa, mutta siinä on paljon niin kuin, uh, homeworkia. Eli Hirveän hmm. pitkiä päiviä. Sanoit, että saa neljä tuntia täällä tänäänkin ja nyt kello on siis jo kuusi, niin kuudesta niin. kymppiä tai puoli yhteentoista. Kuusi, kolkyt viiva aika. Miten sitä jaksaa keskellä yötä harjoitella tuolla se, intensiivisesti? Niin. Kyllä siinä on niinku yleensä aika väsynyt, mutta niinku onneksi noin tunnit on niin mielenkiintoisia. Ja niinku kuulostaa pahaa, mutta se on oikeasti tosi hauskaa. Okei. Okay. Okay. No mehän tullaan mukaan Jää, sitten. Joo. <laughs> Sanotaan Terille vaan, että me aloitettiin nyt sun intensiivikurssi. Pääseekö tänne suomalaiset ihan kaikki vaan? Uh, joo, kunhan on hyvä englannin kielen taito. Okay. Meillähän okay. on okay. <laughs> koko ajan menee Teri, Teri Snyder, Snyder, mikä se oli? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no mut hei, katsotaan vähän minun tätä paikkaa on, niin sitten nähdään tätä. Täällä on makeita kaikki. Täällä on oma teatteri, niin tää on semmonen niin koko teatteri. Ja tässä on varmaan jotain kuvia tästä. Eri voi niin itse niin okay. kertoa näistä näytelmistä, mitä tää on ollut. Käykö teillä täällä sitten semmosia niin näyttelijöitä, luontoja tai niin opettaa? Täällä on teitä. joo, menestyneitä, joo, on hyvä, että sinä näytelmistä täällä käy itse asiassa. Niin Kuten joo. esimerkiksi Cynthia Nixon, taas ollaan täällä jo tuo Essex and the City jalanjäljillä. Hän on mun tuleva opettaja. Itse mä otan tuon Sarat Jessica Parker, jonka kuva on tossa ah, noin. Okay, niin, tossa mm. paljon parempi opettaja. Täällä niin aloitteli toi um, Edward Norton. Ja hän on, niin kuin, mun mielestä hän aina niin kuin, muistaa kiittää Terja jokaisessa puheessa, mitä hän okay. niin kuin, aina saa. No, niin, niin pitää ettenkin rupea El- kiittää sitä Terjaa. Joo, joo, just niin. <laughs> <laughs> Me mennään Joo. nyt poikkaa sitä Teriä seuraavaksi. Ja Edvard Nortonenkin toivottavasti se olisi jossain täällä maa jotain yksilöstä käsiä. Me aloitetaan kanssa käsi. nämä kurssit. Me aloitetaan suoraan vähän semmoisesta, että ei mene mistään harjoittaa. Vähän ylempää tasoa. Ei mene harjoittaa tai tämmöistä aloittelijaa. Ei, todella. Meillähän on kumminkin toi näytelön pohja jo tullut tässä kahdessa viikossa. <laughs> No niin, me saatiin Terri tänne oikein lavalle, ihan mahtaviin lavasteisiin. Hi Terry! Hi, how are you, Kelsey? Were you surprised that I'm speaking Finnish? Yes, I thought, oh oh. 
I'm in trouble. I don't know a word in Finnish. No problem. We can speak English if that's okay. That'd be very much okay. <laughs> okay. So Vera, Vera is one of your students here at your school. So she's Finnish. How difficult is it is for Finnish people to be an actor in this town? Well, I mean, I, one of the big things she's going to have to work on is dialect, you know, and we have a wonderful dialect teacher here because we have people, uh, you know, from all over the world many times, but many times it's accent reduction that's got to be worked on. And from there on in, she's going to be the same as anybody else coming here. Uh, I don't know what class exactly she's taking. I know she's not with me. Is she in the camera class? I think we, she's in the first, the, the big beginning. Yes. The beginning, yeah. Beginning. So, I mean, what we have here is beginning, intermediate, and advanced and we want to be very careful of what class we suggest to somebody because it's really important that an actor is in a class where they're comfortable and challenged but they're not over their head that can be very damaging I speak from my own experience when I first came to New York and I studied with somebody that I shouldn't have been studying with at that mm. time and uh, I really I had done a lot of plays but I had not taken many acting classes and I was not ready for that yet okay. and it could have been very damaging Oh, yeah. so what do you do when you first come here? If I want to be an actor, what what should I do first? Well, we have an orientation every Monday night uh, that starts at six o'clock and usually goes till seven thirty. With myself, my co-producer here, Peter Jensen, and Peter Miner, uh, who teaches the on-camera, and then Sally, who's the managing director. So we talk for about forty-five minutes to everybody, and then we interview them individually. So. Obviously, if you're just beginning, you don't have to audition. But if you've had any experience and you're not just going to be in the basic beginning class, you would audition for me or for Peter. Uh, and I audition because I do four advanced classes. Uh, Peter Jensen also does, but he also does an intermediate class. But uh, we want to get somebody started right. And we have these other programs that like an evening intensive in which you're here twice a week rather than once, which is going to be much better. Uh, you get more into the groove of it. Uh, we have a year-round conservatory uh, that just performed today this is the first year around conservatory mm -hmm. and I just I had nothing to, I taught four weeks with that class of script analysis but they put on a production this morning a one-act play and I And not because it's my studio, but they, the work was so honest, I was sitting there crying at the end of it. I really, and I will do it again right now, just in talking about it. It just, uh, I just, uh, they were wonderful, oh. you know, and it just, it's so rewarding because they've, they've had everything in the conservatory that we do here, from the, the body dynamic work, physical work, to the vocal work, to commercials, to, to the works. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, you could really see it pay off, and, uh, and I've just been at two, uh, two very disappointing Broadway productions where I don't see work like that, you know, oh, yeah. connected work like oh. that. And uh, it just, uh, I was just so pleased. But uh, that's a program. We also have a six-week conservatory. Mm -hmm. And, and it's hard, you know, at the times right now and money, but they find a way to afford it and, and do it. And uh, it takes a lot of dedication. It's a, it's a tremendously difficult profession to choose. Mm -hmm. And your chances are not good. Mm. You know, and but you've got to do the business of the business. You've got to hang in there. Uh, you know, you've got to believe in yourself, and mm. you know, because there's a lot of rejection, mm. and that's hard to take when you get up there and pour your heart and soul out, and you're still rejected mm. for some mm. reason or another. You know, you got to bounce back. Yeah, of course. Mm. So, how difficult it is actually is to become an actor? It's very difficult. It's extremely gifted. Uh, some people, one of the problems with some people is they don't train long enough and they want to get out there too soon. And then there's, they do a lot of kind of what I call get rich quick classes. They do uh, commercial classes and on camera classes that are not training, but they're just like right into results work and they don't learn the craft. And that's what you've got to learn how to work. Mm -hmm. You know, and the difference between being on stage and being in front of a camera mm. is a big difference. Yeah, I mean, of and that's unfortunately now on Broadway we have so many television stars or movie stars, and I've seen them, and two of the movie stars in particular I love in films, but I've seen them both just fall flat on their face on stage because they're mm. used to that camera being on the end of their nose, mm. so they cut everything back. And camera work is such eyeball work, anyhow, with the inner life, and the camera picks that up. Where stage, you've got to project much more. 
people, and I'm sure they feel if I if you get me that big, I'm being phony, you know. With but because I know, the, I know. Yeah. So you had different classes for people who wants to be in movies or people who wants to go to theaters. Well, we're mainly training for theater. Okay. Uh, I personally feel that if you do the stage work, it's going to make you a much fuller uh, actor in front of the uh, camera on television. Because I know when I go to movies and so forth, and uh, I can always tell the people that have had the stage training. Because there's a work there that is just many times deeper and richer, and it's not just the personality of the actor. But, you know, the people that we see in film that really stretch, look at Meryl Streep. I mean, she can play anything. Mm, but so she's cool. had that whole background, that mm. training, that stage training. Mm. And she still goes back to it once in a while. Mm. Uh, can, can you be a good uh, actor if you haven't taken any classes? I think you can get lucky And I think if you don't train, that's your comfort zone, and you're comfortable with that, and it's pretty much the kind of actor that ends up playing the same thing in everything they do. Mm -hmm. So you can predict the performance when they see their name on the program. Uh, they just haven't widened their craft. They don't take any chances. They don't take any risks because they don't know how to. Mm -hmm. They've never had that training. They've just gotten lucky early. It's, it's a danger sometimes in New York with agents uh, that you know young people coming here that are really knockouts right away. Now that the soap opera is disappearing, that might not be true, but right away, they just glom on to this person, and then the person suddenly is making soap opera money, which is very good, and they, well, I don't need any training. I made it, right? Yeah. And then they don't go any further. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, it stops, mm -hmm. yeah. So if you want to be an actor, you, you come here and you take your classes, so what's the next step? What should you do when you have at your classes? Well, I think somebody starting from scratch, it's going to take two good solid years of training. Sandy Meisner, the famous acting coach, says it takes 20 years to be an actor. He doesn't mean that you can't work during that time, but to really understand the craft. I think that can be applied to being a director, being a writer. It just, you know, it, it takes time. Because uh, I, I, you know, I've been teaching for 43 years, and I'm still learning. Mm. You know, and it, it, I don't want to sound like a broken record, or mm. you know, it just you learn. And um, you know, there's younger people coming in that, uh, you know, and as I get older and then they're younger, I've got to really adjust, mm. you know, mm. with that, and and try to get into their world and mm. where they're coming from, because mm. it's a different world from where I came from mm. at that age. Mm. But uh, I think. Um, uh, I think the training, I started by saying it's it's a good two years, uh, and I think even when an actor is working and getting jobs, the class is like a gym. Come back and do a class once in a week. I mean, the, actors are lazy about this. Opera singers take a class all their life, so do dancers. But actors suddenly feel, I don't need that anymore. Mm -hmm. And I loved Javier Bardem, who mm -hmm. said recently that every time I start on the movie, I go back to my beginning acting teacher and I work with him again in class with beginners. Really? Yeah. Oh my yeah, God. Because he said, no, I, I want to get back into that. Oh. And look at the kind of work he does. I mean, he's a wonderful actor. So Edward Norton is one of your students. Yes. Mm -hmm. How can you know if somebody's going to be very good actor? Well, Ed, for instance, the minute I saw him, I was about to go to Japan to direct something, but I, I called my agent because he got cast in a play we were doing right away. And I said to my agent, you've got to get down here immediately. <laughs> yeah. Some of it, uh, Catherine, is charisma. And that's something you can't teach. There's a charisma when a star walks in you know, the stars go off around them. Mm -hmm. And it's the difference between a leading man and a leading lady mm -hmm. and somebody who can be a very good solid actor but doesn't throw that aura off, mm -hmm. you know. And it, that's something you can't teach, it's, really. Mm -hmm. you, you can't really teach talent. It's, you know, you've got to work with the person individually and bring out what they have as far as you can bring it out. Mm -hmm. that's, what we're, that's what we're trying to mm -hmm. do. So how many students can get really good jobs? If you, if you have here, uh, I don't know how many students you have here in one year. Uh, we have, I would say, we hover around 220 to 250 because we have a lot of classes mm -hmm. here. And uh, 
the, they are getting like some of the people that are in the intermediate classes and, and other classes, advanced classes, are getting work. I mean, my classes are ongoing, but you know, like at the end of this month, I'm losing two people to jobs here. Uh, one guy will be out for three months because he got a whole mm -hmm. summer gig. Uh, and, and it's just they've got to keep hustling the work. Mm -hmm. And it's hard because, you know, agents have to submit to casting directors and getting an agent uh, that really is a name enough agent that when they submit, the, the casting director will recognize that submission. Uh, you've got to keep working at it. You've got to really get organized with the business of the business and getting yourself out there with letters and headshots and finding out who's auditioning. And how can I crash that audition? How mm. can I get in there? Or sometimes writing letters can be very helpful. Really? Oh, yeah. I know somebody who wrote to Edward Albee, and she said, I know your play is cast, but I love your work. And she did a paragraph to Edward of why she loved his work. And he got her an audition. Really? I never know if she got the understudy or not, but that's what she said. I just, if I could understudy. You oh, know, but my. he was impressed with the letter. But I think finding, without being obnoxious, mm -hmm. but finding any angle that you can use. I mean, we do three plays here, and we get industry coverage here. Now, I just did a play with 22 men in it, The Changing Room, about a North Country rugby football team, but there were about 17 young guys in it. So we really had agents here galore, oh. and some of those guys are getting calls, and uh, good. you know, Very good. and that doesn't mean the agent will sign them right away, but at least the agent will start to send them out. Okay. And uh, you've, it, you've just got to work at it. Yeah. So you need uh, uh, teaching classes, you need a your own agent. That's, th that's yeah. the f first thing you have to have. Yeah. So you have to have your own agent. Yeah, you, you have to have an agent. But, oh, I, w I know the point I was trying to make. Sometimes getting to know the writer. See, if the writer wants to see you, I don't care whether the agent wants to see you or, or the casting director. If the writer calls the casting director and says, I want to see Joe Schmo for this part, they're going to be seen. So I do tell the people here many times to get to know writers and maybe do readings if you can get into that. Many times casting directors will use actors to be readers and you learn so much mm -hmm. by being at auditions and see why somebody self-destructs themselves. You know, the attitude that walks through that door. I mean, sometimes there's bitterness or anger comes through the door and you're sitting there and I've been on that end as a director saying, wait a minute, I didn't ask you to be an actor and I'm sorry you're that angry, but I don't know if I want to be with that in rehearsal every day. Oh. You know, because I got real attitude yeah, coming yeah, into this course. room, you know. Oh, that's uh, not good. No, but it, it happens. I mean, when you've been rejected enough, somebody comes in with a chip on the shoulder, or somebody will dress completely incorrectly for the audition and then ask you to see them. Uh, I remember years ago I was doing a dollhouse by Ibsen, mm -hmm. and a woman came in. I will never forget it. She came in with a green blouse on with a coffee stain on it and a pair of slacks that looked like she had slept in them. And I said, are you reading for Mrs. Lind? And she said, no, no, for Nora. And I said, darling, you're going to have to go home and change because I cannot possibly look at you dressed the way you are and even remotely consider Nora. Oh, my you God. You know, and, and, but you want to say to them, do you really want this job? Yeah. I mean, you just self-destructed yourself yeah, 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 completely. Yeah. Oh, my God. So it's, 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 I think, learning much more about auditioning and learning, I was just talking about it today in class, when you get in front of these people that a casting call, whether it's for film or, or stage, you've got to know what walks in the room with you, what you project. Mm -hmm. That's really important. And I know I spent two years trying to project the wrong image when I first came to New York. And the minute somebody said to me, you know, Terry, you're kind of Midwest farm boy, I walked in with that and it made a whole difference. And I got to do some of those other roles that I was trying to project, you know. But it's like get your foot in City Hall before you try to change it. Yeah. You know? And it's so important that you got to know what you throw off when you walk into a room. Because many times you empower the casting people, and many times they don't know what they're looking for. Oh, yeah. And oh, then it walks true. into the room, and everybody goes, Jesus, that's really interesting. Mm. And you have to have your self-confidence. Yes. Yeah. You have to and believe you're in your show. body. And centered in your body, and the body work is very important. And the minute you open your mouth, that voice. Mm. I mean, so I, I have to teach my... I have to learn to speak more, like, I don't, have, I don't want to 
have that dialect. If well, I'm not having it's not just the dialect, it's the voice and the what the voice projects. Even if you're on camera with a mic over your head, you've got to have you've got to get into the diaphragm, you've got to get down here into the pelvic area, because if you're not down here in your breath, you're not on your voice. And you're gonna get polyps and notes if you get an intensive rehearsal period. I went to a Broadway play the other night and the, the man that's in it, it's the reason it's on Broadway, but he's not an actor. And his voice I mean, I'm sitting in the third row, and his voice was driving me crazy. Really? And he's going to hurt his throat. Oh. He's really going to hurt his throat. Oh. Because he just doesn't, hasn't had that training. Oh. You know, and it's like, he's the reason, you know, they're on Broadway, but he's a stand-up comic. Right. And he's up there with four actors who are just wiping him out, you know. But, you know, he also brought the show to Broadway. Mm. You know, so... Well, there's yeah. a lot of things to remember and to 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 learn if you want to be an actor. It's just, just it's not enough if you if you are beautiful or handsome or you can talk or you can act. You still have to do a lot of things to yeah. learn. No, it. it can't just stop there. You're playing your looks, and they're only going to last so long anyhow, right? It says yeah. the body is what well, you know, but uh, you better have something else to fall back on, you know, besides so just your looks, right? That is, that is <laughs> right, so right. Thank you so. Much. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. It was so nice to see you. Yeah. Yeah. No niin, nyt me otettiin mukaan tässä nämä prosyydit. Me ajateltiin nyt sitten ruveta tutustumaan Saulin kanssa näihin, että me päästään tänne sitten sun, sun perässä näyttelemään. Ja Teri oli niin ihanaa. Eksa. Se on ja ihan mieletön. Että tänne me tullaan, siis tämä tää oli se meidän vaikeus, me ollaan kierrottu kaikki parhaat kato Hyvä. paikat. Hyvä. Hei, ja tota, nyt pitää kysyä, että minkä takia sä oot ihan ehdottomasti valinnut tuon näyttelijähomma? Koska kaikki muistaa sut mallina, niin mä vielä haluan kysyä ennen kuin sä tonne taas paukahdat harjoittuksiin. Uh, no. Tiedätkö, mua, mikä mallin töissä on aina häirinnyt, on se, että joutuu olemaan niin feikki koko ajan. Että kaikki niin, siinä on niin. niin feikkiä, mm. mutta niin näytelyminen on sitä vastakohtaa. Niin. Täällä vaan niin totuudella pärjää, niin. jos on niin niin, aito. Joo. aito. Niin. Joo. Mm. Se on ehkä ero. Ja no niin. Mikä on hyvä no tossa on hyvä selitys. Niin, no hyvä vastapaino Jaa. varmasti, koska Jaa. kyllähän se on sit, kun mallin töissä saa sieltä, no, anteeksi, simpsutella vähän lavalla, niin täällä saa tehdä vähän jotain muutakin. Jaa. Katri toivoo, että pääsee sinne simpsuttelemaan. <laughs> Meistä on tullut jo niin monta asiaa täällä reissulla malleja ja näyttelyä, vaikka mitä. Hei, mutta ihanaa, kiitos Veera, Hei, oli ihana teille, tavata ja hy- hyviä kiitoksia. näyttelyjä, tuota, opintoja. Kiitos, ja kiitos, me kiitos. tavataan varmaan Hän sitten myöhemmin, kun me tullaan tänne takas, katon näyttelemään sitten. Meistä. Totta kai, tehdään vähän Meister-tekniikkaa. Juuri näitä tekniikoita, Meister, joo, juuri sitä. Okei, no niin. Moi moi.